Here we are. Leslie, you always say we're waiting for me. Yeah. Who are we waiting for today? We're waiting for Chelsea. Waiting for Chelsea. I know, I'm, I'm behind the camera right now because of it. Yeah, Steve's in front of the camera for your zoo adventures today. Yeah. I want to say it again because you always wait for me, waiting for Chelsea. <laughs> but she has a very good reason for being late. She's doing a program at the North Carolina Zoo. So we'll pick sure. up with her in a little bit. And her one, you Anyway, I guess that's true. Digital friends, it's so nice to see you today for Zoo Adventures. Uh, yeah, Steve's in, front of, Steve's in front of the camera. Leslie is currently behind the camera, but I'll be out front soon. We're gonna smack her and bring her out front. Operant conditioning is your topic today. We are so excited to bring that to you. And we're gonna be meeting with some harbor seals. Yay! We're gonna be meeting with a Karen, that's cool. And we're going to be meeting some Galapagos tortoises too and learn about training the method of training, how we train it, operant conditioning, positive reinforcement, and the goals of that work. What do you think, Leslie? Should we go ahead and wait a little longer? Or things will catch up, with, catch up with us over at SEALs. I'm sure she'll be here any second. Let's, I'll radio her, we'll be no over there. All right, sounds good. Okay, bye. See ya. Where are you going? We haven't even started yet. <laughs> oh well, well, we'll come back to them later, I guess. Keeper Karen, meet our digital friends out there. Hello. It's so good to see everybody today uh, for our Zoo Adventures world. You were so kind. Keeper Karen invited us out to see the Harbor Seals today because we're going to talk about training, operant conditioning, and positive reinforcement. And I need help with definitions because they're fancy words. So, Karen, they are really cute. They are. <laughs> Harbor Seals, right? Yep. Harbor Seals. One point for me. Um, but operant conditioning our guests have done have seen training before and they've seen the rationale and why we do it but we haven't had a chance to really define it and kind of see it in action from the ground up and you said you're able to kind of help us and help our digital friends get an idea of what operant conditioning is how it works yep so let's first come up with a quasi definition of operant conditioning so we allow these guys choice and control so they can kind of do whatever they want but what we use, positive reinforcement, so what they like. So in their case, they really like fish. Fish. Well, with some other things, they like some scratches and things, but mostly fish. Okay. Um, we use that to reinforce behavior that we like to see. And if they do something we don't like, we just ignore it. Okay, so operant conditioning, you said positive reinforcement there. So I'm finding something that they like. Yep. And I guess that takes just trial and error, find out that, yes, fish is good, onions are bad. Pretty much. So, that's, so we figure <laughs> what that is. So, and then you provide, how do you, how do you get it started? I mean, how do you say, okay, we want to train this behavior. You've talked to the vets. You want to do a blood draw, for example, because we've seen animals do that. So how do you get started? Well, you always want to start really simple. Simple. Yes. So they have to learn how this game works. So it's basically like a training game. Oh, wow. So one of the first things a lot of times we teach is a target. A target. Yep. Put your nose on our hand, put your nose on a little buoy on a stick. But it's something really easy to train. Because if you think about it, if I hold the buoy out on a stick off to the side of an animal, what are they going to do? They will look at it. At least that. Some yeah. will go and sniff it. Some might move towards it. Anything they do, I can say, hey, good, have a piece of fish. Oh, really? So if you put the, so if I put my hand up for a high five from Leslie, Leslie's over there. So that's that completed behavior. Yep. But, so if she's not sure what to do, I do this and she moves towards me and we give her, re we give her reinforcement. Yep. And then another reinforcement. <laughs> Where's another my reinforcement? reinforcement. What do you like? High fives. <laughs> One of the best people on the planet. Right <laughs> One of the best people around. So that's really cool. So you come up with the food. Is that just like a trial and error? See what they like, and or you have an idea? I guess we have an idea it. already for working with them. Yep. So let's say if I wanted to target, I put that target out there that on the buoy, as you said. And if they look to it, maybe a reinforcer, and they look to it and they get a little closer, a little bit. Because you want to get them as close as they can yep. to it. Yep. So, nice. and then each time I can hold it, and they're eventually going to be like, wait, I'm looking at it, but you're not feeding me. Okay, maybe I go a little closer. Oh, <laughs> I see. So they're solving that problem. Yep. I didn't get the, I didn't, if I put my hand up here, and unless he doesn't quite get the high five there. Then you might like, move a little closer mm, and be like, hey, did you see this? <laughs> get it a little closer and a little closer to the high five. Yep. 
until she does have that success. Yep. And I'm assuming that you always want to, your target is success. Let's get to the point where they've looked at, that's good, that's success. Yep. And then you push it a little farther. Okay, now try it a little bit more. Move towards it. Okay, cool. Is it fair to say that the goal of operant conditioning or positive reinforcement is to always increase a behavior? Yep. So you're always trying to get something increased? Um, well, technically it could be both. So oh, can. in our case, we're looking a lot to increase because we're looking for um, the behaviors we want to train, such as okay. their husbandry stuff, like that blood draw you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you could also use it to do a different behavior. So you're increasing that behavior, but maybe to get rid of something else. So, oh, now um, that's interesting. If these guys were coming up to our feet all the time and we wanted them to stay in the pool, yes, we're, might, we're going to reward them for staying in the pool, but technically we also are decreasing them staying up here. So oh, I balance. see. Got you. So you're trying to make this behavior go away by, by doing, increasing that behavior. Yep. They're smart cookies. But we really focus on what we want because that's where the reinforcement is going to come into. And that's right. going to make it positive, which is awesome. fun for the animals. Got you. That is so cool. And I'm going to assume some of you all have probably done something like this in the past where you're trying to get a dog to sit or to fetch or a cat to do what cats do. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys have used something like this because you can do this with any, any animal I'm sure out there. Yep. If you have a dog begging for food at your dinner table, if you teach it to go sit on a mat, you oh, reward that behavior. But guess what? From... It's no longer begging for food at your dinner table. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Very nice. Well, you said you were going to pick up and grab some stuff and kind of show us the steps and yeah. how it works. Awesome. Stay tuned. This is exciting. Wow. May I ask who this is? This is Ronan. <laughs> Did you see that? Digital friends. Yeah. That is awesome. And you're going to kind of show us kind of the steps to a behavior, right? Yeah. Okay, what are we going to, what do we need to do first? Well, we mentioned about that target. The so target. I figured we'd start with showing that off. Oh, it's awesome. So, can you target? So I asked him to do the behavior. So you present the cue, the, is the, is the, is the, sorry, is the buoy the cue in this instance? Yeah, or, is the word? or the word. Either, or the word. Yep, either way. Okay, so that's target. So you got that, and that's the behavior you want. Good. Okay. And what's the word good? That tells him he did the correct behavior. Oh, um, okay. So I can't always get him a piece of fish right at the same time. Oh. So that tells him his reward's coming. So and it also just... kind of takes a snapshot. So he knows this is what it was correct. That way he doesn't have to guess what part of this was correct. I love that. It's a snapshot. So it's that moment in time that he knows that's what I did right. Yep. So now it's kind of, it's he's learned that. And now you give him another reward or reinforcer. Is that what yep. that is? Okay. So then from there, yep. we can use this Good. to shape different behaviors. So what was that word? To shape different behaviors. Shape? Yep. So let's say I want him to turn around. Okay. If I move the target this way. Good. He kind of starts that process. Oh, so he didn't, he didn't finish the turn. Nope. That'd be but the that was close. Stages. And then wow. eventually we can move this all the way. Good. He definitely follows the target he very does. well. Oh, so you the first Good. one to shape that behavior, it was a, it was almost what you wanted, but you he wasn't quite there, so you had to do it. And I'm sure I'm assuming that takes time. It does. So this is a cue behavior cue. he knows. Gotcha. Um, and then what we do is start putting it on a cue. So we fade out the target. We start asking for the behavior of turn. Okay. You get your squid. There you go. Which for us, if we turn around, he'll turn. Are you kidding? Good. But the way we started that was we would turn around and then we'd take the target out and do it. Eventually, oh. we turn around, we pause a second. He's like, I know what's coming next. You're gonna put this target. I'm gonna spin around. I'll just save you the trouble. Let's get to my reward. <laughs> That sounds like you, Leslie. I'll do it. Just give me the reward. Just, just give me the, the high five. Yeah. Just give me the high five. Life is good. Yep. That is so neat. And what is his reward? So he gets a couple different types of fish. 
A couple times of fish? Yep, he has... <laughs> Chelsea's, gonna, Chelsea's gonna come up and get a picture. He has what? what? What's the little one? The little one is Capelin. Capelin? The big one is Herring. And these guys are Squid. Oh, <laughs> little calamari. That is so, so cool. Good. That was fun. So that was another behavior that was taught with a target. So we would put the target on his tongue. So eventually he was sticking out his tongue. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Can you see that? Oh, that might have been, was I in the, in the way, Chelsea? I'm moving my shadow out of the way. That was so neat. Fun, fun. And a harbor seal, you said. Yep. Um, how old? He just turned 14. 14. And I'm sorry, this was again? This is Ronan. This is Ronan. 14-year-old harbor seal. And then we also have his half-brother, half Paco, who will... Be just about ready to turn 14. Is that who Melissa's working with over here? Yep. So Melissa's working with over there as she walks away from us. <laughs> Melissa, we want to say hi to you, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> and what's Melissa doing right now for us? Um, so she's working with Paco. That way I can focus all my attention on Ronan. Oh, I see. Um, we can work them together and have one person work them. Um, or we can split them up and give them a little bit more individual attention. Nice. Where are you going? He obviously wants a belly rub. He wants a belly rub? If I had gloves on, I would give you a belly rub. Pocket, or Ronan. Why well, don't I have gloves on? Same reason I don't have the real mask on, because I forgot them. Okay. Same on me. Wow, that is so neat. Do you have some other behavior? Let's let you do your thing. We'll step back and you do your thing with, with Ronan. So we do have a lot of husbandry behaviors, which I know you guys mentioned. So like, he just showed off his belly, but that allows us to give him a nice good look. Look them all over. We can check out his flippers. Oh, wow. look at you staring at Breeze and Peach. That's so nice. And all this too, you can work with the vets yep. to get some ideas. Hey, we need to do yeah. this with him. We need to do that with him. And our vets can come here and actually do voluntary blood draws. That is so neat. Um, if they you do didn't injections. hear that, voluntary blood draws, y'all. He does eye drops. Eye dro oh, eye drops too, really? Yeah. One of the behaviors I'm working on with him is to actually stick his nose right in here. That then, That is a two liter bottle of pop. <laughs> it is. But what it's training is I'm actually watching for him to breathe. So that's the behavior I'm actually looking for. Seals, they can hold their breath up for 30 minutes. So by getting it on cue, if he ever needed anything like an inhaler, yep. he'll be trained for it. He doesn't need it now, but we train, we try to train preemptively. Wow. Or if he ever needed to go for surgery, uh, and then if you needed a mask, uh, we can do that. Wow. And I, he's no, if you notice, you'll, he's continuing to breathe. Yeah, that's what is. I've been reinforcing. Yep, yep, yep. And that length of time, that duration is also very important, I'm sure. Good. You don't want it to happen yep. right away. Yep, so he's going to have to, if I ever needed this as an actual behavior, it would be a long duration one. So. Gotcha. That is so cool. That is so neat. Uh, I see the fish are different sizes. Is there a reason for that? Um, just the types of fish they are, okay, but each fish, fish has a different nutritional component. Oh, wow. Um, and these guys, they definitely like certain types of fish better than others. Um, so the capelin and the squid, they're kind of your broccoli of the fish world. Ah. The herring I just gave him, that's your candy bar. Sweet. I want some... No, I don't. <laughs> That'll make him nice and chubby. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's precious. Can you imagine, this is the job, ladies and gentlemen. We get to do this all the time, friends. This is so cool. Not all the time. When we get through, it's kind of fun to be here. That is so neat. So give us a couple more there, Miss Karen. I know you've got a couple more pieces of food. A couple more reinforcers. Neat. I have a quick question. Do you have so a question? You said that, that the, um, the new behavior you're kind of training him to breathe into the soda bottle is kind of new and is that why you gave him kind of the bigger candy reinforcer yep. for that because it's like whoa great job this is yep. new so we can vary different things sometimes we can give him four or five fish hey that was a really great job sometimes we can give him less if it's just something he kind of does um so we can vary that up and what he likes too there's definitely a different value to it wow well this has definitely been a treat keeper karen we thank you so very much for letting us come out and visit with you and Ronan. No problem. How much fun was that? More.
we is also there... try to end them at the same time. So okay, that's what I want the siblings to fight here. <laughs> I don't want the siblings to fight. Good. And you see, that's definitely behavior. I could never get a fish to that while he's Wow. Operant conditioning and positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Provide that cue. Get the behavior from the animal. Good, that snapshot, I love that. That word or the cue, you might have heard clickers, you might have seen whistles before. That's that snapshot, you did a good job in the moment. And then because of that, here's your reinforcer. What a great description. And really great, it gives them great mental and physical exercise. Oh, I bet, that is awesome. Well, again, we can't thank you so much for letting us come back out again. Thanks to Melissa for doing her part over there. Thank you very much, Melissa. I love it. Harvester. Um, tortoise is eating somebody's shoelace. I, do we, do we have changed scenes. Chelsea, <laughs> poor April's shoelace is being mauled by a, a tortoise. tortoise. They're ready for some training. I think you're right. Yeah. So let's go right to that. And okay. then we'll talk about some of the other questions because April and Kat are here. We are in our animal ambassador section, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome. <laughs> April's, this is my shoelace. <laughs> so um, before we talk about what's going on, we like to sh just demonstrate that Training seals, awesome. Yeah. Training tortoises? What? What do you think? Can you? We'll find out. Yeah. Check this out, watch. <laughs> All right, cat, April, ready, go. And poor Chelsea's like, where do I go? <laughs> Chelsea's behind the camera over there. It's like, now what? So we have two Galapagos tortoises here. One is supposed to go to one color, one the other. So there you go, God. That's what exactly what we saw with seals, now with tortoises. Although I think we got a little cheater here. So yeah. you think you drop something there, April? A for effort. A for effort. <laughs> so again, you heard the same stuff. So when we went with the seals for April and Cat, they said that we ask for a behavior, and I'm assuming that the, the poles are kind of the asking for that behavior. There was a bridge, that kind of connection, that good, that, hey, yes, you did it. And it sounded like you whistle, April? Yes. So you whistled to do that. Yes, I have and, and then their reward isn't fish. It's what? It is greens or salad, whatever they're eating that day. Greens? Oh, so you're using their diet in the training. Yes, we don't want to give them a bunch of sugary stuff um, just yet. They're still growing, so we don't really want to get them too chunky. Gotcha. You've got a <laughs> tortoise on your foot. Right oh, you untied your shoelace. Is that a trained behavior? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> maybe, maybe get that behavior right. All Thank right. you. Can you show us that trained behavior again? Can you show us them going to the I'm going to switch sides and make it challenging. Oh, oh see if it me. wasn't just where you Cat, were. Cat, say it again. Say it again. I'm going to switch sides <laughs> to give them a little bit of a challenge. Good. I'm going to hide my shoes. Nice. All right, let's see if they go to the right color. So, and so who, who's supposed to go to which color? The little guy's supposed to go to the red. They, they're gonna get it right. Sometimes they kind of follow each other. No, Wallace definitely looks like looked at Darwin. So it looks like maybe like, oh, I'm supposed to go over there, but then definitely turned and said, looked. It looked that process of I'm supposed to be going over here. Yeah, you can literally see Wallace thinking it through. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. That's really neat. And it's the same process in a box in a box turtle in a galapagos tortoise as it was a seal um where, what other animals do you guys use this type of work with in uh, general um we have our rabbits that we will target train oh, cool. um we're working on a few of our lizards actually our blue really? tongue skink and then we have two uh newer lizards that we're going to try to target train as well we just got them so that's we're starting that process oh nice um our skunk stinker mm -hmm. she's target trained we have two oh rabbits. we've met stinker before mm -hmm. We yeah, have what? Tin ricks, which are kind of like a relative to hedgehog. Not a lot of people know what they are yet. Ooh. Uh, do you think one day we can show our digital friends them some of this, some of these animals? <laughs> yeah, <sure>. definitely. <laughs> awesome. That's so great. my question is why? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? I mean, they're they're not as big as sea lions. They probably are easier. We could just pick them up or anything like that if we really needed to. So why are we training them to do this stuff? Guess what? What? <laughs> One day, these guys will be bigger than sea lions. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure how big sea lions um, are or how much they weigh, but they're going to weigh like 500 pounds. These so, turtles are going to, these tortoises weigh 500 yes. pounds? 
So it's gonna be very hard to move them physically. So we figured we would go ahead and get them um, moving voluntarily and hopefully associating us with good things. So they'll hopefully follow us if we ever need them to move in the future. Oh, so the target is moving the animals here to a different color and eventually follow me mm -hmm. kind yep. of thing. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah, we've uh, actually used it with uh, getting them to go to the scale on their own. So we've got them to follow the target to a scale a couple of times now. Gotcha. Chelsea, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, looks like Darwin is interested in your shoelace now. Yeah, he, he, he found my shoelaces a little bit. I would, I would love for our digital friends to see Chelsea right now. She is locked <laughs> in a corner with a Galapagos door at her feet. She's holding the door um, so she doesn't fall over and the camera pointing straight down. <laughs> I'm holding the door so a tortoise don't walk out of it. <laughs> That is so neat. Oh, and there's that training again over here with Wallace. I have to say, sorry, digital friends, I was saying sea lions. I'm so used to saying sea lions, I feel like, because I did so much sea lion talk when I worked at an aquarium. <laughs> we have seals at the North Carolina Zoo, and that is who Oh, we good catch. Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So definitely, I mean, most seals are relatively um, under 500 pounds. There are definitely some that are over, mm -hmm. but yep. that's pretty amazing. And this was kind of fun. Did, were you able to show that, Chelsea, just with that little interaction right there? One tortoise went, it was like, didn't get anything, and, and look, April didn't give any reinforcer. And the other tortoise came over and said, hey, wait, 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 what are you guys doing over there? And um, so then they realized, oh, this is what I've got to do again. So it's neat that they came to their specific, oh, <laughs> look at that, share food, not share sharing food. Come on, share food, not sharing food. You have something green on your face, yeah. and I want it. Oh, this is going to be a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> so digital friends how about a thumbs up for april and cat and wallace and darwin that was fantastic and did you think about the training of an animal like this training a reptile and to realize it happens all the time it's not even that new but to see this exciting stuff happening at the north carolina zoo and you said they're going to the like getting them weighed and then moving around there's actually a plan in place so it's not just a trick that they're training. It's actually a plan to be able to use that behavior to accomplish something for the animal's care and wellness, for their health. Yeah, it gives them more free choice too. So Ooh, when- Yeah, great call. Because right now we could just pick them up, but we want them to have kind of choice to come over and things like that too. And especially when they're older, there's no way we yeah. could pick them up. So we training that free choice um, or being able to come when called or when the, the um, target sticks go out is going to be really beneficial for yeah. them. Keep the whole thing stress-free, uh, as stress-free as possible. And it's like so many people are so excited but that's our summer camp program. Yay, yeah, yes. Kids. You might hear um, um, child screams in the background. Those are screams of excitement yeah. with the uh, summer camp. We're all very excited to have in-person summer camps again. So yeah, absolutely. It's awesome that they're here. Uh, the kids are here enjoying the day. That's for sure. Um, in the habitat, real quick, just because we're here and we're actually inside the Glabgo Tortoise Habitat, Miss Cat. Yeah. I see there's things in here. I see a log over there. You see the buried thing here. You have a you have a little tiki Ch hut. Chelsea, show them the tiki. You got to show them the tiki hut. <laughs> so what? What's in the space? Just because I mean, it's not right. quite what we're talking about, but it's kind of cool that we're here. And what can, what can you share? Yeah. With us? So um, we wanted to give them most a space where they could definitely move around. Galapagos tortoises in the wild, they actually do move around a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is their babies. We also wanted to make sure they were building up their leg muscles and neck muscles. Oh, okay. So all of these logs that you're seeing are ways for them to use those with it safely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them flipping over. Right, right. Um, they also go through, they also sleep a lot during the day. So Ooh. they need cool, in the heat of the day, they need nice cool areas to go to. So that's what these half buried pipes are for. I see water uh, over here. Uh, yeah, so we want, they also like to soak. So we want to oh, make sure they have a shallow pool to get into because while they um, do go into water. It's not very deep. They're not the best swimmers. Uh, so, but a nice shallow pool for them to get in nice. and out of. Um, and then we did give them kind of a double layers again. This is really cool. <laughs> again, uh, making sure they have just uh, areas to go up and down using those muscles. And in the future, they'll be used to going up a ramp. So if we need them to go into oh, a vehicle or wow. into a crate to move them, they can More get up that planning. ramp. 
and they don't have they won't have an issue with it. Different uh, dirt in there, different is that different on purpose? Dirt, yes. So there's some peat moss in there mixed with sand. Okay. Um, these guys are good diggers as well. So that gives them oh, something wow. to dig into. Um, and the bamboo on top is for shade as well. So oh, we have nice. shade cloth going on, but also yeah. some extra shade right here. To, and also to make sure that they weren't going off the edges. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can, and they'll just kind of whoop. Y'all are thinking of everything. <laughs> and I do really appreciate the other thing. Hey, Chelsea, one more thing to share with them. I think this is really exciting. Did you guys know that Galapagos horses climb? No, 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 no. no. no that's not, not true at all. Um, Kat was very kind. She said, you might want to move that log so you don't trip. And yeah. we're like, she knows us very, yes, well, yes. very well. I was standing on this rock and I almost tripped at one point. <laughs> very good. And uh, with a pool, the, you said you said you kind of enjoy a nice beach soak, you said. You wouldn't mind diving into the water at the beach. I, well, I love the water. So. Hanging out there, mm -hmm. which is cool. Man. Uh, that's what I would do all day. Just soak. <laughs> so there's not a lot of vegetation in here, right. and that's on purpose, because otherwise they would literally just eat all of it. They're doing a very good job. <laughs> so we do give them their diet in different ways, um, and we do spread it out for them so they don't fight over it. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot, we will sometimes hang it up on the fencing so they have to reach with their neck and grab oh, it fun. and pull. Kind of like or, they would do in the wild, huh? Mm -hmm. um, but we want, we're, they're on a pretty strict diet right now, being so little. We don't actually want to feed them too much because then they'll outgrow their shells. Well, they can and grow too fast. They can grow too fast and their wow. shells can grow too small. Um, and then they get weird kind of overgrowth or weird looking shells yeah. that make it difficult to get around. So we want to make sure that they're getting everything they can right now so that when they're adults and they're very large, <laughs> they don't have any of those problems. Nice. Gotcha. Looks like Darwin is very interested in the camera. Yes. That is so awesome. Um, do you guys want to see the finch response? <gasps> the what? Yeah. They have a what? What's they it have, called? So these guys have what's called a finch response. So in the wild, where there are finches on the islands where they live, in the Galapagos Islands, um, finches will land on them. And these guys kind of go oh. into a trance. They stretch out completely. And the finches kind of pick at if there's any bugs on them. Or if they're going through the grasses, they get seeds all over them. So oh. they'll pick all of that stuff off. And the, the tortoises are like, this is awesome. So they kind of stand I'll up bet. real tall and go into a trance. Um, and it's something that's innate in them. And we- They just do it. They just do it. So Have we, you done it before, Leslie? Like personally, have I? <laughs> have you done <laughs> Stretch your neck when, out. Yes, when, when birds land on me, I just- I love when birds land. <laughs> You're really a Disney princess, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Have yes. you, have you, I haven't. I haven't seen it with them. All right, Leslie, show us or you catch can, somebody. Show sure. us. So they um, just kind of do one of these things, and you see you guys goes up. So they. Oh, he stood stands up yeah. higher. Yeah. So if you didn't know, turtles and tortoises can feel through their shell. There's lots of blood vessels and nerves there, so you can feel this. And the birds usually land and kind of will touch the neck. Oh, look at that. And go touch the feet. And this is actually really helpful for us. Um, so as they get larger, we can actually take blood from the oh, jugular wow. if we need to draw blood, if they do vets. And it keeps them nice and calm when the vets need to check them over. Um, and we can look at their feet and trim nails if we need to. I love that. That so is so cool. Right now, it's just get them getting used to being touched. So, so it's an, I'm sorry, it's a natural behavior, but you yeah. can now use it for like a training thing. Yep. You can work on other things. Yeah. So while, or sorry, Darwin here, he does it um, fairly often. Gotcha. Um, Wallace, he does it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually not sure if they're boys or girls yet. We won't know until they're about 20 years old. Oh. Um, oh, you know. Yeah. Well, you know. But just, just 18 years from now. <laughs> but just going, kind of going by behaviors, um, we think that Darwin is a boy. I see. <laughs> he's actually, a little bigger, too. Yeah. But size matters mm -hmm. a little bit. In Galapagos Tortoise World. So they'll just, he'll just stay like that for a little bit. That is so neat. <laughs> that is so neat. All right. Well, April and Kat, thank you so very much. Darwin, Wallace, thank you. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, nice job over there. I do my best. You done good, Leslie? Great. Fantastic. You did a great job too. Mm -hmm. I love these. I love these. Tortoises. This is so much fun. Oh, looks like a big bonus there. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. While you're watching the tortoises munch on some grapevine, maybe. Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and sign off for today. We will. Thanks everybody for joining us. In front of the cameras today was... <laughs> Leslie! And Steve was in front. And this one! And this one, this, <laughs> this tall guy over here. Chelsea was behind the camera. Wednesdays at 10, everybody. Don't forget to tune in. Um, we will 
See you again soon. Stay safe. Bye, everybody. Bye.